Okay, here we go. I'm going to tell you. Your birds hurt with every last breath that I have. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay? Okay. You're a Gemini sun sign, and you're... That's... This is in the... Fourth house, Gemini. Okay. Uh, do you want to guess what your moon sign is? So, oh, you already have, you already know what it is. Okay. Fuck. Your moon sign is also in the fourth house as well. Your sun and moon are in the fourth house. Let me see if you have any other planets there. Okay. First of all, your moon signs in Gemini as well. Like, your sun sign Gemini, moon Gemini, and you're an Aquarius rising. Like, this is what this means. Uh, your fourth house is Gemini. Holy fuck. This means your mom was a schizophrenic, um, two-faced lying bitch, but also this means that you are, um, you can be schizophrenic from the inside, not only that you have a personality that is, like, sun sign Gemini, multiple personalities, but you also have a moon in Gemini, which means that you have voices in your head and racing thoughts, but you could be really funny, and then you could slip into a different personality that's just not funny anymore, and then you could become, like, this schizophrenic person that... If you don't think the same way about the I do, I I will get mad and act like a childish brat. How your emotions become irrational when it's in there in the Gemini, but Gemini is air sign. It's a mental sign. It's in your fourth house, the emotional house, the house of home. So when your fourth house is in Gemini, it means you gossip about everybody. Everybody drives you nuts. But your tenth house is in Sagittarius, which you, your tenth house is ruled by Capricorn. You have twelve houses, right? The ascendant. An Aquarius means that's your first house. That's how people are going to see right away. This is the I am. The Aries energy is really fast. In the first house, you have Aquarius. So you'll come off as very, very friendly and probably um, wanting to make a resolution happen. You, you're you futuristic right away. You, you're friendly right away. You want to be a humanitarian right away. You know, that's how are you going to come off? But your 10th house is actually in Sagittarius. Your 10th house is ruled by Capricorn, right? That 10th house is ruled by Capricorn. This is your career. This is um, how everyone's going to remember you. This is how you want to be remembered. This is how you advertise yourself. Your Neptune in, is also there. Your Neptune is ruled by Pisces and Capricorn. It's a psychic planet. It's like a spiritual planet. It's a delusional planet. It's also a creative planet. But in your Neptune is in Sagittarius as well. This means you, higher learning expansion. You have 10,000 Sagittarius, this means you are very lucky with everyone knowing you. You're going to be very well known, and you want to become a guru in the advertisement field. If you want to advertise yourself, you want to be known for something, it's probably going to be a guru of some sort, you know, about your philosophy. That's how you want to be remembered. That's how you're going to act like at work or something. If you do, your Neptune's there. This will make you want to give people illusions of that, who you are, and plus, you want to put forth all your spirit into that or whatever, and travel with that, your career and your job or something. I don't know, but you'll be very lucky with it. I don't know. Your Pluto's in Libra. That means you don't like, you like, you like to isolate yourself with a person. You, you don't like to be alone when you isolate yourself. You are with somebody to isolate yourself with. And it's an eighth house of death. Wow. Secret sex secrets and other people's money. Your eighth house is in Libra. This means you might have kidney problems. Or, do you have any kidney problems? Have you ever had any kidney problems? I have before, but not since I was a kid. Really? Wow. Well, your Lilith is in Leo. And it's actually in the... 5th, 6th, 7th house of other people. So, you see other people as, like, a big old narcissist. But secretly inside, you can be an egotistical narcissist, too. And you could probably just make a joke about it, but, like, um, your Lilith is there, and people don't want to see you get all this narcissism attention and become a threatening beast like a lion is. The part of the lion that people don't want to see. Lilith and Leo means everyone's revolving around you, but they're giving you respect because you're teaching them to do that. And they don't want to see you like this person, but, like, and all you want to do is have fun or whatever, but, like, um... Lilith and Leo means everyone revolves around you and probably walks on eggshells around you. And they don't want to see that. And they, but you do it anyways, whether you notice it or not. You, you think that no one revolves around you because, but you're making them all revolve around you. You know, they like do things for you. And they would go through, walk on, um, volcano, um, lava just to get to you to please your stupid ass because you have a little thin mouth on King Leo and no one wants to see it because Lilith is like a fighting, rebellious, 
but being yourself kind of thing. It's almost like being Aquarius, like your right curse rising. Um, but uh, it's like Lilith is the first um, wife of Adam, and she's like, you're, you're a dick, Adam. Go suck your own dick. And she takes her um, whip cage out, and um, she, or she says tells Adam to take his ribcage out to suck his own dick like Marilyn Manson or whatever. And then, like, she does her own thing, and she'll be proud of it. She'll be arrogant about sex. Like, I don't need you. I can do whatever. I guess. And that's your part of you, and you are Leo there with your ego there and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Fifth, sixth, seventh house. But you see other people as that, but you keep on attracting people like that to you. Like, they need to be robbed around, but you do, you know what I mean? You get people to rob around you as well. So you just have that going around. Your crown is in Taurus, so you, like, have to heal yourself through um, probably, like, shopping and eating food a lot and stuff like that. You know, like, stimulating, like, you know what I mean? Something like that. And your CRS is an Aries, so being a leader is going to heal other people and how to be yourself and find out who you are and blah, blah, and surviving and... um. Sticking up for people and stuff, and, like, being a hero. Like, acting quick, and, you know? And then, um, I'm just gonna simmer to- Okay, your Saturn is life lessons, discipline, responsibilities, restrictions, things that are hard for you than nobody else. And what sign it rolls in, and what that sign rolls, is the things that you're gonna have challenges with. Like, it's Virgo, this is your health, your daily routines. And this is you being a perfectionist, and you have to let go of it. But how are you gonna become a perfectionist? How is it gonna give you the gift of being a perfect? have a perfect life and it's in the um seventh house of relationships so this could give you a opportunity to get married or be relational with people like and it could take it away from you but you'll learn lessons through acts of that and of your health so you have to live in a bubble and you probably have allergies and you can't indulge in um unhealthy habits like everybody else because it's it's something stopping you like your body you're born but um, it could give you good DNA, it could give you perfection uh, with your diet and stuff, but also can give you restrictions in it, and you have to learn lessons to it for some reason. And serving others is how your dad was probably, like, very critical of you and taught you how to do your chores, you know? And also, he probably treated you like an inanimate object or something, like, you keep on attracting people that are just like your dad, and you, you, th you don't want, you, you keep on attracting, but you're secretly like your dad. But you don't want to, you keep on attracting people like your dad because it's in your seventh house of other people, shadow self. This is your shadow self. It's like other people that keeps on attracting to you, like almost like love partners and stuff. And you're like, that's all you have to settle with. And you're learning lessons through them, with them. And it's like you can never find that escape um, and fantasy. So you have to be practical with everybody who comes into your fucking life. Like you're just serving them. Like that's all about them, caretaking about them. And, and you can do that very well without, you know. And, um, your Mars is in Taurus. You don't like to get mad. You like to, you don't want to eliminate the pleasures in life. And this is your sexual expression. Mars is your sexual expression. How you get mad at people. Are you following what I'm saying? And it's in the third house of lying and storytelling and using your hands and, um, trapping people in a conversation with your wit. Like, if someone nitpicks at you, nitpicks at you, nitpicks at you, you're still not going to get mad because you're like, maybe I can get some information on this person. Maybe I can sell my cookies to this person, like, after they're done talking with their dumb rant and being annoying. And, you know... Does. I'm not gonna get mad at them, um, but you might be secretly embarrassed too. You might be have secret because like you might be bashful, but people don't might not know it because you're just sitting there, you know. Like you might be embarrassed easily like, than others. Oh, your Venus is in in Taurus. This means that you're looking for a sugar daddy. You're looking for somebody to financially secure you. That's what you need. That's what you're gonna go for. And it's in the third house of like your community, neighbors, and stuff. And your Mercury is also in Gemini in the third house. So you like to think before you talk. That's why you're slow. You're not like interrupting me or anything. And I am because I'm Gemini because it's rising. This means you will think before you speak. You'll speak at the right moment where you think you have like a, a way in for me, me to give you a question and see if that's just right or wrong to get confirmation. But you're not speaking up. <laughs> but you maybe I'm just talking too fast and keep on talking. Can you keep up with me? Because maybe you can. I don't know. It's at home with itself, Gemini. Do what? Yeah, I'm following you. Gemini and Virgo rules Mer Mercury, and you're only activating Gemini, but it's still activating, but they, you know what I mean? So, am I right about your moon sign being in Gemini? Like, you have a schizophrenia, and, like, voices in your head, sometimes you can be a brat, and you want to get your way at home, especially with your mom, 
Because this rules your mother, how she gave you the environment. So, like, the moon is there. So, she kind of gave you a mother nourishing environment. Everything that Cancer rules, like, moon. But, uh, yeah, she probably spoiled you, too. And kept you home. And, um... Yeah. Right? Right? And, um, talk to you, you know? Like, she gave me Two-Face, but you have to learn her rules. And, um... But still, that's... And it probably she'll be your neighbor. <laughs> is she, like, your neighbor, almost? I'm like... Okay. No, mother and I are on opposite ends of the world, pretty much. Oh, did you travel? Did you travel for your career? Because you were 10th house that You've been lucky with that. Your Jupiter's in Leo, so you'll get lucky with all kinds of tension. And also, um, re reproducing children and, um, um, being a relationship with children. You'll be lucky with it. If you aim at that, you get luck. So you should, um... And be a star and be lucky with your expression. Like, if you express yourself in, like, a certain way, you everyone just, like, be dogging after you just because you did a little, um, uh, hokey pokey and turned yourself around or, like, oh, my God, that's what it's all about. And you barely even did anything. And it's in the, um, sixth house of day-to-day -day routines. Every single day, you're lucky with your health, your day-to-day -day routines being on time, your hard work. And also, it's in this, your sixth house is in Cancer, sixth house day day routines, right? Okay. And how you do your, uh, Cancer means that, uh, you're like the mother of everybody every day in your family. And you're lucky with, and Jupiter is next to Cancer in the sixth house. That means that if you can aim at anybody and make, start a family with them and make them your family, make them feel like they're a part of home is what you like to do, that you be lucky and make them feel like, you can live with them. They can live with you. You know what I mean? Like, you sheltered right. them. <laughs> I mean, you haven't been wrong yet. Really? Cool. Your North Knot is in Virgo. And, um, this is what you came here to achieve. You already learned how to be unconditional loving and forgiving and Pisces and psychedelic and all that shit. But you, you teach that to the world, the creativity and the soul and being psychic. You know, you teach that to the world, but you came here to gain. The characteristics of this Virgo, this person who's serving other people and talking people into fucking buying your bullshit because Virgo is a money hungry sign and it's OCD seems a perfectionist and you came here to perfect things, but you're having a lesson learned that you can't and it's forcing you to do it the right way because your Saturn's in Virgo and your dad was trying to teach you this too. You had a lesson learned with your dad. And he taught you so much because it's the opposite side of you that you don't have and you lack. You lack being grounded. You lack having a day-to-day -day routine because, like, fuck it. Go get on that society check because this will mentally fuck you up and physically fuck you up, too. Because Saturn and Virgo is your motherfucking health and your mental motherfucking health. And that's crazy. So you already know what it's like to be Pisces, a freaking psychotic freak. I mean, spiritual, like, oh my god. I mean, psychic, too. You could be, but, um... It's in the house of the one one. I hate fucking numerology numbers. Fifth, sixth, seventh house, the seventh house. You came here to come get a relationship. This is your purpose. Every time you're with somebody you want to be married, that's your purpose. But also, you have lessons to learn in there because it's not going to just give it to you. And it'll just give it to you an opportunity, but it'll take it away. Like you are out there. You can be out there. If you don't want to go out there with other people and be the, meet the needs of the others and take care of them and and have them work with you. You want to meet some... You keep on meeting people probably at your everyday routine. And your dad forced you to learn that. And, um... You know what I'm saying? But you feel like everybody else is like this. And I'm trapped. And now I have to learn how to do it myself. And no one else is helping me. But everyone around me is doing it. And I hate them because they're nothing like me. I want to be... Aquarius friend, I want to have the ego, and I want to have the know-it-all, and I want to know all the knowledge, and I want to show everybody how to be humanitarian, but everyone else is like, um, like, you have to get up every day, you have to do your chores, you have to be fucking practical every day, you can't just live in your head, and it's like, oh goddamn, I've always lived in my head, because I'm Pisces coming to this world like a fish, but now you're a gem you're also still a Gemini ego, it's a mobile personality, so you're, yeah, so, um, you have Uranus 
and Scorpio, sex, death, and transformation, and secrets. Uh huh. So it's in the night talks of preaching and stuff, and philosophy, and going to sexual adventures and revelations, and like, oh my god, I'm gonna transform people with my weirdness and my humanitarianness, and like put it upside down, and then I could be jealous too of the knowledge that others have and I want to receive, and then like. That's what it would be like. You know what I mean? And then it'd be like, uh, it's upper world, planet, Uranus, weirdo, revolutional creative person in a soul, deep, scorpion, occult knowledge, dark place. And, um, where you'd be weird in the despair of the light. Uh, your eighth house in despair is Libra. So relational. You would, and it's in red, Uranus, Uranus is in your, your Uranus is in retrograde. And your Neptune is in retrograde. That's the inner self that you have to face. And your Neptune is in Sagittarius. Expansion. Good God. I can't keep up with what I'm even saying. And, um, you're, wow. So the more you go inner, the more it expands. And you get lucky, too, with yourself. And traveling and then having to put it on camera is another thing because, Neptune rules cameras and it's in the mid heaven. So you have to be like a photographer or something or like you are to like um, historical things. You'll probably be like taking pictures of or something and traveling like this. Like I want to go to Egypt or something to make my money and make myself known. And you might be lucky with that type of thing. Being a guru and shit, it just falls into all the things that you want to be spiritual. You want to be represented as spiritual and your philosophy. You want get paid for that but every day you have to take care of your family because your sixth house is cancer and every day you're lucky with making other people your family and getting attention for it and being a narcissist ego brat but you can't because you're dealing with your dis dysfunctional your fucked up health your physical body you're still not done learning lessons through other people everybody else has a physical problem why do i have to take care of them that's how your father, you probably had to take care of him, and he probably had to take care of you. And chores. Is that true or false? Am I over-exaggerating? Or is it, or what's correct about it? What are the pieces that aren't? And you're going to have to figure that out, and you're going to be mad about it, because you have to analyze. Your dad forced you to analyze things and be critical. And your dad was critical. And so is other people that you keep on fucking attracting. And they, and like, authority figures. Like, what the hell? And, um... You keep on a th you keep on attracting these narcissist people, and obviously you're lucky with being a narcissist yourself. So <laughs> I guess I mean, um, like threatening people and stuff. I don't know. Hmm. But you're so moon in fourth house that your inner self is at home, and you want to think and think and think there. And you okay? Your third house is in. Gemini, that means you wake up so excited and you run up your nerves when you get up. Like, you can't calm your fucking nerves. But when you go to sleep, you're always philosophy. Your ninth house, let's see, your third. No, your third house is in Tor Taurus. You're comfortable when you wake up. You eat. You just, duh, everybody eats. But, like, do you like breakfast? <laughs> is that your first thing yeah. that you do? And you yeah, just. Yeah, so like when you go to bed, you want to have sex or something, and you want to dive into the occult knowledge and being with spirit, like you're in darkness and despair, like you probably can't, it's intense for you emotionally to get some sleep, but when you wake up, you're a stubborn ass bitch, and everyone doesn't need to mess with you, because you're like, don't tempt me, I'm a fucking Taurus, and I'm also wanting to relax now, I want to, I want to enjoy my food, and I want to enjoy the pleasure of the body. I want to wake up to the flowers. And because, like, I've been up for hours because I'm in Scorpio mood last night. I was so in despair. I couldn't get to sleep. And it's like I'm desiring so much and I want to write a list, but my father's making me write a list and, I, and I'm having a problem, everyone else. So I get impatient. And then when you wake up, you know, you're like the queen bee and everyone's like, don't mess with that Taurus. And plus they'll be like, oh, he thinks he is entitled to getting a massage when he wakes up. Oh, he thinks that he's entitled to food when he wakes up. So he will get his possessions and he'll get his food and no matter what. But 
Yeah, and you're like, I don't want to fucking pussy God in church. I want to know the truth. And you're probably like, oh, I might even devil worship because I'm just in my philosophy of being a demon in your head. Right? Is this you? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, it is. And then, like, um, your Mars is in Taurus, so you still might have embarrassment issues. And it's in the third house of being a liar, and it's also someone who likes to, uh, um, a lot of things, and curious about sex, multi-neighbors and partners and shit, and, um, do the talk of the town. Everybody fucking knows you. Everybody fucking knows you. You're famous. You're famous. You're famous. And obviously you talk shit about everyone at home. But in the outside world. You are well known for being a this fucking douchebag guru. That everybody fucking knows. But you don't want to. You think everybody's talking about you at home. And paranoia hits you so hard at home. And you become a schizo frenetic from the inside sometimes because you don't want people when people come to your house you love them and nourish them you're like the mom but you get so out and you're this other person that no one ever knew that you were right right this is so true and then I, I mean this is i mean how would i know this is true i don't even know you right this is not uh, yeah, astrology is not psychic. It can just give you um, people um, hints of the interpretation of what this personality person is going to be like. You know, like the makeup of this person. Like you're more than just astrology. But this is a side effect that y'all could all experience and have and just laugh about it because you're, you know, this is what you were born into being. No one else is. You live your own individual chart. No one else lives it. So how I was supposed to fucking know. Maybe it gives you hints of the personality. And then you can really see the results of how that person really was. You know? And then you're very relational. You get everybody to do whatever you fucking want. Because you have Mars in Taurus. You have Venus in Taurus. You get everybody to pay for your food. You need. You think love and money is food. You're entitled to people in your relationships because your Venus is in Taurus. And it's in the third house and you think everybody in your neighborhood should fucking cater to your bitch ass. By voice. When you speak, it could be beautiful. When you speak, it could hurt. When you speak, even if it's just very stable and you, you no one's thinking that you're crazy, you get away with everything. And um, you trap everyone in a conversation. And it's very professional. It's very like, I know the law. I am the law. I'm immune to the law. I'm a stubborn Taurus. And I'm, like, you know what I mean? And then, like, but in church and shit, then you're ruthless and fearless. And then, um, you know, like, you could just be a demon in a church building and not giving fuck. Right? <laughs> right. And, yeah. uh, and, um, obviously you want to make a revelation. Like, why can't we be fucking demons? Are you kidding me? Humans? I know human. I see. And look like I look like a human because I'm Aquarius rising. I come across as human, but a weirdo. I come across as a friend that you want to know, and that's you, right? Right? Like very tolerant and just dis yeah, discipline. And everybody wants to be your friend right away. But uh, and you're just lucky with this guru bullshit. You could probably, I mean, your work. Let's see, Neptune. So it might come off as really artistical and, like, Lady Gaga bullshit, which is not bullshit, but, like, that's the message that you would, um, be giving off, like, good stuff, I guess, and from other places where you experience it, because you can't get enough in your own comfort zone, but I'm still, I don't know, you can't have an everyday routine, it's hard for you, but everybody else can, but you're forced to, oh my gosh, what happened? Hold on, I gotta beep, okay? Hello, I'm sick. <laughs> Hello. Well, I'm on the other line and I gotta call you back. I'm recording myself too, okay? Toodles. Okay, Toodles. Hello. That noise will go away in a minute, okay? Are you there? Hello. Are you there? Did that noise get on your nerves? Hello. 
Hello? I guess it's gone to your nurse. Hello? Hello, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? I'll just... Hello? Okay. I'm hanging up on everybody. And then we'll get confirmation, I suppose. I mean, if I didn't answer the other line, that beeping noise would be getting on everyone's nerves. If you heard it, because I turned it off before you could, so whatever. Anyways, I don't really know what I should say about this, but fortune and friendship is in Aquarius. Fortune. Well, hello there. I'm sorry about that fucking noise, and I'm sorry about the phone couldn't hear you if you were trying to talk. But, uh, you have fortune in Aquarius with your friendships. You probably make money off your friends like a douchebag does. And then you probably have Vista and Aries, which that's what you have. You have Vista and Aries. You have the gift of thinking fast, doing quick things. And do you like to be athletic and stuff? Not really. Well, fuck you. Why? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Well, something Vista and Aries, like you have a survival mechanism. It gives you a good survive. You survive off your 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 what you your friends and stuff you you survive off them you're like a bum and that's your philosophy you think god should give you everything <laughs> right oh yeah it's your ninth house in scorpio too and um you said well yeah your crown is in taurus and your cirrus is in aries and your palace is in pisces my palace is in pisces i don't know what house your palace is in because it doesn't show me on this motherfucking shit Ugh. But, um, that's cool. So you have a lot of spiritual fucking decorations in your house or something. Like, um, everything's your, like, altar, right? Oh, yeah. I'm so right, bitch. Me too, because my palace is in Pisces. My spirit is in heaven. Yeah, I decorate my life with heaven or something. And it's what you do, right? Yep. Yeah, and then, um, like, uh... Yeah... This lasted 27 minutes. What do you want to say about it? Well, it's, a, it's just amazing how spot on you were. Really? I never, I, yeah, I never really worried about astrology much, but now I think I will. You better think, bitch, because you're a Gemini and they're very informative. You said you're jack of all trades, and that's really us, because I am Pisces, cuz Aquarius, Moon and Aquarius. But I also have Gemini Cusp Cancer Rising. So, I feel you, bitch. I get you, bitch. Yeah, your moon sign is Gemini. So, we're like best friends, because moon Geminis, I always rest under with them. Even though I can put I can put up with their fucking schizophrenic bullshit. I can put up with you waking up with um, a hunger and being a queen bee dumbass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stubborn ass bitch. And, like, I can never wake you up. That'd be annoying. Because you'll never, no one can wake you up, because you'll take an hour if you they try. Just to show them they ain't gonna bust you... They ain't gonna make you do it. But day-to-day -day routines, your dad probably fucking frustrated you. Right? Yeah. There you go. And your mom, she was just two-faced. She didn't care. She gave you everything you wanted. <laughs> she lets you stay there even when you're all grown up. And if you never grow up, because how can you? You always stay young, because Moon and Gemini. Geminis are young, spirit. Yep, yep, yep. At heart in the fifth house. Gemini. Cool. Hmm. Was I right about your family and stuff? And how, and your neighbors? How you have multiple neighbors that uh, cater to your ass, right? Right. Exactly. That's your environment now, and that's so funny. And you made it all happen, and then you were just born into this community to fucking take care of your ass. And they don't want to see you be a narcissist asshole bitch, but you are doing it anyways, and you're proud of it. And that's the king, that everyone, you kick people out of your life like a douchebag. You kick people out of their life, but you see no use for them, like physically, or, um, that's awful. But you achieve, you know, and that's why we hate you, because you're just a bitch, like you're not a true friend. Right? You're just a gossip-ass bitch, and you talk about everyone because you're a fucking fourth house Gemini. Fourth house Gemini means you are a gossip bitch. This is true. But everybody knows you. Everybody ends up knowing you. Right? Right. Tenth house Sagittarius of expansion. And no matter where you travel, people are still gonna know you. 
And, um, what do, you, what do you do for your profession? Do you sell guru bullshit, fraudulent, fake stuff? Do you do fake tarot cards? Are you gonna do that? I mean, would you do that? Would you sell f stupid tarot card reading, which is bullshit, <laughs> knowing that you're not psychically triggered? You just know a lot of knowledge about how to convince somebody about a story and a card and it relates to them. And maybe you could hang out with the psychic ability too in the public fields, because on stage, that's where you can trigger your psychic ability because your Neptune is there and it can expand and can get lucky. People will be convinced of you and you could be a delusion and people will fall for that too. You'll take advantage of all the people with the mental illnesses, but you're attracting people with mental illnesses too. You're attracting people who are critical. You're attracting narcissists and you're attracting them and to take care of them all at the same time. When is it going to teach you, right? And selling things. I'm correct, right? You sell things to other people, and other people are selling things, right? Right. And this everywhere. You keep on attracting narcissists too, right? People that are like your dad. That, but your dad was your biggest fan, wasn't he? Yeah. But he's criticizing you at the same time. Like he'll put you as the star kid. You know, he's like a, he's like a. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does he do movies? Not Have much. you really cool? And you're yeah. Your mom was the mother nourishing thing and a two faced thing and whatever. But you still were brat. Wake up as a brat. Yep, 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 yep. Everyone fed you, but you would have to get up a day routine. Like maybe your dad was kind of like a farmer or something or teach you how to be a farmer or something. Ugh. Live into your own abundance, boy. You better learn how to sell things, boy. Or, you know, convince people, boy. Be a fraudulent salesman or some bullshit, boy. Right? But you don't. But you have a, have trouble doing that. But it could give you the gift of doing that somehow when you're honest. I don't know. <laughs> what? Yeah. And in your health, your health problems, you have to have bad allergies and a diet that you have to be on, like weirdo diet. I don't have to, but I have been thinking about it. Okay. Wells. Bales. And, um, what did I leave out? I don't know, but that's my interpretation. I'm a thousand per, per sure. Like, there could be more things that I left out, obviously. But that's a quick little nitpick of the stupid attitude that I had to just get that all out there, because it's 32 minutes. Or I could give you 500 hours for free, because that's all I do. <laughs> I do this for everyone for free. And ain't nobody has to pay me, because I'm not a douchebag, bitch. But you know what? Tarot cards, if you want to pay me just to say what the fuck I think I know, then go right ahead. But if I'm going to do a psychic read on you, it's free. Because there is no way I'm going to charge that. That would be retarded. Because psychic reading is really something that you got to hold on. And you got me to get to contact with God. I should pay you. And that's how that really goes. But you know what? Yeah, we're all money hungry, desperate, and all this bullshit. And we need help. We all want some shit. Because we're all retarded. And we all can't do it by ourselves. Because we're babies. And... But we still want to do things for others. I want to do things for others for free all the time. Because I can, bitch. But, like, obviously, I, don't, I, have, uh, I have problems with my own body. And I want to spend money for <laughs> to survive. And then I won't ever have to ask for money for anybody. And I never have. Never will. Anyways, probably won't. I don't know how I'm going to do this by myself. Anyways, whatever. Um, yeah, your fourth house is in Virgo. So uh, that's your purpose to get on a diet and a routine anyways. Your dad's teaching you your Bullshit purpose just because you want to do it yourself. You actually want to do this yourself too, right? Like all your dad taught you to do, you wanted to do it yourself, but other people, is right? Or something like that? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, cool. For now, I am going to have to hang up. My, my roommate is trying to sleep. And oh, still. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. The What's their astrology sign? They work in the morning. <laughs> do you know their sign? You don't? What? That's weird. No. We'll go find out. Toodles. <laughs>